Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 12th show of the current season, the season two of the Diversity BW Hotelier, the GM show series. We're here with our fourth show in Bangalore today, Friday, the 18th of August. I have some great stars, some great leaders from the Indian hospitality industry. And the topic of the show today is extremely interesting. It's about people. It's about talent. It's about the, it's about the job market. With the spectacular hospitality bounce back, the industry job market is red hot. So are the jobs. Is the pipeline good and ready to fill in the demand? Now, before I really go into the show, let me bring in the diversity video up partners for the series. Thank you, Diversity. Your story began us over a century ago in Chicago. You've since then expanded to over a hundred countries and 80 of them physically. And you've created innovative cleaning solutions, products that meet the needs of various industry sectors, including hospitality. Thank you, Diversity. We do the show virtually because it helps us reach all general managers across the country without having to pull them out physically. And we discuss some very important topics and issues, both current and futuristic and very relevant. Like I've always maintained and told everybody, the show format is regional where we cover the North, West, South and East. Next week, we are in the East, we are in Kolkata. And then we head to the Northeast and Central before we come back to the Northwest and South. With two shows a week, every Thursday and Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. May I request you all to block your schedule, your calendar, and watch out the show because this is online on bwhotelier.com and across our social media platforms. Be there, follow us, encourage us, and encourage us to bring to you more such gems. And let me tell you, we are not stopping at this. We are going far ahead of the GM series. At BW Hotelier, like I've always maintained, the sun never sets. We do what the others least expect us to do. But what we do is relevant, very classy, and very meaningful. For those of you who missed watching the show, don't worry, don't stress. The show, the recordings are available on bwhotelier.com and our social media platforms. Permit me now to bring to the show the stars on the show. First in is my dear friend who just moved into Bangalore from Kolkata, Sandeep Jori. Sandeep Jori is the area manager for the Southern, uh, is the general manager Novotel and Ibis Bangalore Outer Ring Road. Welcome to the show, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you. Next in, is my good friend on the outer ring road in Bangalore, Manish Garg. He is the general manager for the Hilton and the Hilton Garden Inn, which, which is in the Embassy Tech Manita Tech Park. It, it, amazing assets, you know, very visible from the main road and they shine. Welcome to the show, Manish. Thank you. Next in is the boy from the end of MG Road comes in from Moga, Varun Mohan. He's the general manager of the Hyatt Centric MG Road in Bangalore. Welcome to the show, Varun. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Pleasure is ours. Uh, next in is Virendra Rajdan, Chandigarh boy in Bangalore. He's the general manager of the Leela Bharatiya city. Welcome to the show, Virendra. 
Thank you. My honor to be here. Pleasure. Last but not the least, Sachin Maheshwari. Sachin Maheshwari is the general manager for the Grand Mercure at the Gopalan Mall in Bangalore. Welcome to the show, Sachin. Thank you, Bhumnesh. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. Such a pleasure, sir. Thank you all for being here, for gracing our show. Before I roll out with the first question, I shall take a small break and pay our regards and commiserations to Vincent Lobo. As the show begins, Vincent is being laid to rest. Adios, Vincent. Rest in peace, my brother. You've given us a lot. You've given us joy. Rest well in heaven. You've left, left us with gorgeous memories to last all our lives. Thank you for all the time and the joy that you brought to us all, Vincent. We shall miss you, but the heavens are richer today. God bless you, brother. See you, Vincent, on the other side someday. All right, the show must go on. Let's move on. Let's begin the, with the first question to you, Sandeep. May I, if you? All right. right. Yeah. All right, Sandeep, higher ARRs and 100 occupancy is every general manager's dream, right? You'll give your right arm for it. Uh, but is it good as it will push away a few to cheaper options like homestays, unbranded products, or perhaps even skip a destination? Remember, you have to answer this within the context of people. How do you manage it? Abhuvi, first of all, since I'm the first speaker, thank you so much for organizing this. Um, it is such a pleasure to, to be on your platform. I've been here before and I'd missed it for, for a couple of years. But I'm glad that you started this again. And uh, and a lot of general managers that we see here, we have not physically met in the same city, staying in the same city. Mani, Manish and uh, Virendra, we have not met actually in the same city. So thank you for, for this opportunity and creating this platform. So I thought I'll start with acknowledging that nice of you all right so on your on your question um, of course AD, high ideas and 100 percent is uh, every gm's dream but i mean i all of us also know that 100 percent is is not 100 percent every day so we we do 100 percent some some of the days you have value uh, i will i will come to the context of uh, manpower that we spoke about a little bit after we speak business because you speak about um, shifting business um, possibly it could be true when we talk about leisure destinations. Uh, for a business city like Bangalore, I don't think that is an option uh, of shifting business because of ADR. I mean, I do not think that hotels command that position today, wherein uh, the setups or the startups would say that, no, this, this city has expensive hotels and let's not put put up shop there. So we, um, we I don't think, will be affected or are affected by, by that. Having said that, um, it it creates creates a lot of expectations when we talk about 100% occupancy when we talk about higher ADR uh, safe example when we talk about higher ADR it comes with a lot of increased guest expectations on the delivery of product and services when you talk about 100% occupancy or back to back occupancy at least three or four days in the week uh, that the city sees uh, it is a huge huge uh, task on on the service and product delivery. Uh, and that leads us to, to the question of manpower. How skilled are we to handle that? Uh, how skilled are we to meet that expectation that high, higher ideas bring on the table? Um, and that is, the, that is the most serious question. And I'm, I'm glad that you're having an entire discussion of an hour on, on this, uh, which, which I think it's, it's no brainer that industry today is, is facing this challenge all, all over. And, uh, and this, it, is, it is also survival of the fitness. It is about how, how quickly are you changing your gears and, and making sure that one, from, from sourcing point of view is one thing and you, you, you cannot just look at the IHMs for recruitment anymore, uh, be, be it the government aided or be it the private ones. That's not going to be enough. We have to look at other avenues and options and we cannot be surrendering. It's very easy for us to say, uh, Bhuvi, that we are losing people to airlines and uh, 
entertainment and but i think that there, there has to be a, a reverse brain drain also uh, there, there is a huge opportunity for us to get people from that sector or get them back it is it all depends on, on how conscious are we to this how serious are we to this reality that manpower is a challenge not only to recruit we have to be an attractive recruitment center so your work life balance extremely important your weeks of the, i mean today even if you do not do the roster in advance so that the people can plan their offs that becomes a deterrent for people to come and work with you uh, and i i mean before I, i close i also would want to say that you know we have been talking about ex, i mean hoteliers work word of mouth is the best best way of getting guests Absolutely. but i think word of mouth is also the best way of getting people and that is something that we have to focus on a guy who leaves the exit that happens when he when he's going out and somebody is referring somebody and says that you know is this a good place to work i have got a job offer the, the response to that should be oh wow, man you got an offer there you should take it because that is one place to work they take care of the employees they they have a career pathing they do they impart all the necessary things that you need to train people so that that you have to be an attractive not only to a guest but you have to be an attractive hotel or a destination for employees to work and build a career with you you know so i think um, it is it is a challenge which is existing we are better off than we were earlier so i think a lot of us are are learning and changing gears and doing the necessary things to to retain and and uh, safeguard talent um, and better better times to come i mean hotel industry is rocking uh, we are we are getting our due after a couple of bad years due to covid and uh, good times to come not only for the for the for the coffers and the bank balance but also for all the aspirants of working in this industry i hope i get that you did but let me tell you about the bad times i don't even remember them you know i mean <laughs> that's not bygone you know where we are today uh, is brilliant uh, you know touch wood wherever wood is uh, uh, who would have thought we'd come back the way we have and uh, and thank god for it uh, we we're in a fairly good zone now so now is the time to build and build to last yeah so thanks uh, sandeep for your input um, manish if i may come to you uh you know taking on from my observation here walk back two years and tell me hand on heart weren't you worried about the industry and now seeing see the hockey stick effect the recovery uh what are your views and and now we need people right uh, we we lost a few of them few of them moved back to their hometowns they moved out of the industry but now with the growth with the robust growth which and riding the india story we have a great opportunity thank you bhuvi yes uh, two years back uh, you know when i read this question uh, two years back i was sitting in this complex just joined this complex to open this 619 key co- hotel and i was in the pre opening stage at that stage um <laughs> was i nervous um well we are just coming out of covid we are going to open this complex yes there were some apprehensions but uh, time has told time has proved that my apprehensions were incorrect we had our challenges about sourcing opening this co- complex making sure that we are sourcing the material in, in time and sourcing the right manpower um but some things worked for us at that stage and i also believe that the covid gave us an opportunity to try new things um close to 20% of this hotels uh la- manpower is ladies 45% of this hotels leadership team is ladies um a lot of ladies came back returned to work because of covid so so that was a history at that point in time um bringing people to 30% of my workforce at that time was fresh out of college so out of around 450 people around 150 people plus a fresh out of the college and seeing their eyes and uh, looking at their faces gave me the confidence that we'll come out of it they're just starting off their career uh, we are just coming out of covid so uh, that was very very interesting and that gave me the confidence on um, on um, 
that we will be fine. Now, coming to your next part of your question, how do we take it forward? I think so we need to keep diversifying our thought process on recruitment as we move forward. There are people there. Uh, we need to find this hotel employs around 11 specially abled people and they do some fantastic job. Um, their productivity is to another level altogether that uh, I don't find in many other people. We need to find more such people. You know, carrying on what Sandeep was saying earlier that we need to go beyond the IHMs. And that is so true, you know, um, finding more women who want to work, giving more flexible hours to them so that your job is also getting done. They are also getting making money. And we all are coexisting in, in, a, in an environment that uh, everything is happening. And most important thing is uh, continue to recruit young people, you know, that whether we like it or not, they are the future of the hospitality and, uh, and, and the energy that they bring um, is to another level too. So it's been a very interesting two years. It's about opening this complex, about giving job opportunities and moving forward. It's about finding new, new people to work uh, because if you just stick to IHMs and all and the way the business is growing, I, I don't think so our colleges will be able to manage the requirement of uh, manpower in the next five to 10 years. You know, a lot of, a lot of life has gone beyond IHM. IHM has given us brilliant talent, but uh, talent is now coming from private institutes and brilliant private institutes within India, hospitality schools, as we would call them. Uh, and so far, so good. In, there is international supply. There is supply coming in from other industries. In fact, there is reverse brain, bain, brain drain, if I was to say so. But this is a great industry, which has a lot of resilience. And um, we've, I mean, this industry has gone past many low tides. You know? So uh, supply chain is going to be good. But the only thing is, we need to present a good case for this industry. But the post COVID bounce back has been a good case. And the rest is on to you. Like Sandeep said, good, strong word of mouth. Right. So that be that. I shall now come into you, Varun. Varun, how many years have you been? Six years? Six years? Yeah, I've been in uh, the city for about 5.3 years. All right. So there you are. So uh, tell me, you know, uh, this industry is hot and happening like we just did discuss. And, and the Indian hospitality industry has a few challenges. Talent pipeline, like we've said, is one of them. Right. And slightly worrying, not very worrying for me, because I think once the industry is in high, people need jobs, they need to find their natural uh, 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 flair and come in. Tell me, not everyone across hospitality schools is coming to hotels. Uh, right. Some have headed to airlines, few to facilities management. What are your views, thinking and advice? Uh, so thank you for providing me this opportunity. You know, when we discussed about the topic, uh, what came to my mind was let me do some analogies and some uh, retrospection and some kind of groundwork to give it a perspective. Now, uh, most of the hotel chains currently are working on employee retention strategies post the COVID period because that's been a key problem for all of us. And individually, we are doing a lot of work uh, together to bring in, um, you know, a lot of talent to our existing hotels. What we really want is a push from an industry perspective. So the hotel industry should come together and firstly instill the confidence uh, that was maybe lost during the pandemic years as an industry of it being a good career option for youngsters and the student council body. And that can only be done if all the companies come together to first instill that confidence, go back to institutions, wherever the uh, talent may be, and start telling them about how different the work working cultures are becoming and how apt is it for the current generation to join hotels. 
you know, when we talk about hotels and working in hotels, we have a very primitive approach to how hotels exist and how they function. But unexpectedly, over the last three, four years, the new age hotels, the way hotels have opened, the entire service design has been changing. So there are a couple of things and a couple of my opinions are resonating with the fact that we firstly need to acknowledge uh, what went wrong during the COVID. And we need to spread awareness as to how the work cultures of our current hotels are changing. Um, we don't have to compete with each other as hotels first. We need to compete now with other industries that are also sampling into uh, the pie of the same talent pipeline from maybe MBA colleges or hotel management schools. So I went and did some research work just to let you know that we've got a very, very impressive uh, CAGR um, from a global hotel industry perspective. And that's uh, being forecasted at 8.9%. OK, when we talk about retail, the CAGR forecasting is at 44 .4. Airport operations is at 6.5 and then the industry start to take over our CAGR, which is real estate cruise line market, which is almost at 11.5. We have the airline industry, which is planning to expand at a rate never seen before at 25.5%. And then we have a software industry as well, which is going to be expanding at an 18.7 CAGR. So when we are talking about compound annual growth rates of over and above uh, our industry standards, we need to understand where is this staff or the talent coming in from. And each of them is coming in from the hotel management colleges or, uh, you know, the same kind of spots that we are uh, getting our talent from. Um, in India, if I have to break it down from an Indian perspective, we have a total of 100, uh, 1,005 registered colleges in India. And together with these hotel management colleges, there are over 2,000 colleges that are providing courses which are related to hotel management, tourism, or travel, or leisure. So even if I take 75 students per batch or per course, the overall output of, um, you know, moving out, graduating students would not be more than 1.75 lakhs annually. This is good enough for the way we are expanding in India. But when we start talking about uh, the kind of expansion plan other industries are also having, it becomes a challenge. And it becomes a challenge because they are more better in uh, telling employees or their future talent how brilliant their work culture is. And I think that is where hotels have real solid opportunity to improve on. And for doing that, there are a couple of things that I thought we can do right. And the first one is we should be able to give their first impressions in the way that we are not currently doing. For example, their internships can be far more meaningful and far more better and more apt for Gen Z and millennials. And that is going to really bring them back to the hotel industry. OK, I also have a couple of pointers for colleges um, because colleges currently are still in a pre, uh, primitive mode and they're still teaching syllabi which are not really applicable for the industry today. For example, there are a couple of college uh, who are still inducting students and telling them how Fidelio works, which is a property or which was a property management system, which is no longer is existent. So I think syllabi, which is more relevant to the industry, can be a benchmark exposure for students. Uh, the theory that they can they learn in three or four years of their college can be put into practice when they come over. And then the culture of how hotels used to function and how they are functioning now. Uh, can be the key points that we can put forward. As hotel companies, we all go out and look for management, um, you know, aspirants for management uh, programs. We also need to start planning career phases for people who are joining at entry levels to give them career options. And I think that kind of a drive coming in as an industry will really make us a more preferable
preferred uh, for the existing talent and the kind of uh, people uh, that we are. We always say, Hamare time mein to ye hua tha. we need to understand that the times have changed. Specifically after the pandemic, it has changed. So that was in a nutshell. Um, if you see, just to end, the better part and the heartening results are, uh, I was I got in touch with someone from um, IHM Bangalore. They've had over 250 students and the better part is around 146 uh, were the total placements for food retail outlets. HR related uh, retail outlets were about, um, you know, related jobs of 66. And the most was 195, which is still hotels. So hotels are definitely doing something right and heading in the right direction. I think with the opinions that I've put forward, if we do it right, we can really get the talent pipeline from hotel management schools back to hotels. That's about it. Thank you. Well, thanks, Arun. That's a very important uh, uh, inputs. But remember, the onus is also on us as hoteliers. We need to be there where the, where the hospitality schools are with them, showcase sure. our industry in good light, right? And we need to put our best foot forward and bring those students to our hotels to give them a real life feel. I'm not just talking about internship. You know, bring them on and tell them where you are today, you're much better off than we were and see where we are, right? So that'll be, uh, that'll be very nice. But thank you so much, Varun. Virinder, if I may come to you, you spent years there in this industry and across locations and brands. development Tell me development. India needs more hotels, right? Across categories across location, right? Not even uh, uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, and all. Delhi needs a lot of hotel, right? Uh, and uh, so, tell me, in the light of the reality that development is not very easy, long gestation cycles, deep investments, which take long to realize to come back, uh, whole lots of uh, regulatory issues, clearances, and building assets, like I said, takes years. By when things may change, the catchment may change, there may maybe somebody else will come in, and getting returns is even longer. Not dovetail that with the talent issue and all, what is your view? You know, uh... Thank you very much for bringing me here. Pleasure, sir. Every owner who is investing in today's world wants to have a return on investment with a specified time frame. And uh, what happens that a lot of companies which have a uh, history of developing hotels, they have created, they have brought in that design efficiency in their assets, which in long term or in the short term also bring in people efficiency. But as you know, that a lot of hotel companies now are using asset light strategy due to that what's happening that owners are building the hotels as per their own design specs without keeping in view the long term uh, people uh, utilization. So what's happening that Hotels are being built, but are those manpower efficient designs? No. So time has come that all these uh, individual operators, whereas uh, hotel companies with proven record have developed this science and have data to support design changes. But these individual hotel owners have to still develop that such kind of talent which can understand uh, what their business requirements are and accordingly uh, build the design of the hotel. Let me give you a little bit of uh, industry statistics. You know, uh, as you know, for two years during COVID time, I was in my own entrepreneur space and a lot of work between the colleges and the industry. Aim was to nurture and develop the talent for this industry and uh, bridge the gap between what the industry is expecting and what's being taught by uh, uh, by the colleges. And it has been beautifully uh, put by Varun in his uh, 
statements. You know, uh, I had picked up some figures that industry turnover was $22 billion till 2019 and in uh, both organized and unorganized sector. And their uh, industry was supposed to grow at 8.6% till 2025. No doubt we had uh, COVID that played a spoiler, but growth has been robust for the last year and a half. Till 2021, it was estimated that there are going to be 2 lakh branded hotel rooms. This number has gone up since that time, and I do not have the latest figures with me. But as we also know that uh, both uh, Taj, Marriott, and other hotel brands have already announced uh, their expansion plans for next three to four years. Definitely with these kind of numbers, there is pressure on operator to deliver results. And these results can be uh, delivered only by the trained manpower and issue lies there. Whereas we have support of 1100 plus hotel colleges, both private and government to deliver the skilled manpower, but it's not happening because hotels are also at different uh, categories. You know, whereas uh, the guest expectations and requir requirements in a three-star, four-star hotels are different than at a five-star uh, five or five-star super deluxe. So that is where the pressure is coming uh, to an operator that no doubt there are people, but there are not people delivering at that price point. And uh, uh, there was an uh, HVS study, which was done in 21, 22, where they found that 53% of the people do not want to come back to hotels. Uh, I had uh, personally interacted with a lot of these hotel management graduates who are in third year because I was doing a program where we were training them for management training programs. Almost 80% of those students want to go to retail, want to go to airline, want to go to hospitals, or for that matter, asset management, but do not want to come to the core hoteliering. That's where the challenge lies. And uh, uh, what they also saw, HVS has seen that 53% do not want to come back to the industry, 24% want to pursue higher education. And that way, we are left with only 23% who want to work in the hotels, and uh, you know, uh, make their career as core hoteliers. Now, industry and government have to uh, work together because there is going to be humongous need of manpower in the skilled manpower uh, in the coming years. We will have to enhance vocational training. The uh, government can collaborate with hotel management institutions and vocational training centers to develop uh, the specialized courses uh, which will uh, focus on hotel operations. It's happening at this point of time. There are quite a few vocational centers which are operational, but they are making more of those entrepreneurs who can make their own businesses than who can work in, uh, in the specialized trade. And this vocational training will also take care of the individual with the necessary skills, uh, but more at the budget hotel level, not at the mid-luxury or luxury segment. Second is also to promote skill development pro, uh, programs. I remember when I joined this industry, that point of time, we used to have that apprenticeship program that somehow uh, we have- but my, view, my view is also this, Virinder. Yeah. The lesser we de depend upon the government, Yes. the better we will be. No, I'm just saying it has to be between the government and the industry itself. Yeah, but so then the industry yeah. has to learn to fly on its own. Yes, out exactly. Of the come out of IHM. Because the government, number one, has a lot on its plate. And number right. two, the industry needs to be completely on its own. Industry oh. has been on its own. That's why you will see during COVID. And, and I, I must tell you, we have so much of resilience and ideas and thoughts that we can fly much higher and much faster. Right. I shall, Virinda, with your permission, I shall now come into Sachin. You know, right. we've now past our halfway stage. Sachin, Mirko, uh, I, as an extension of my earlier question, right? Uh, so tell me occupancy and uh, ARRs are a done deal. I'll come to FNB. Yeah. 
you know, how is FNB doing across options from fine dining to your 24 into 7 coffee shops and in room dining? And what changes do you notice in the demand and consumption? Have you tweaked your menus and service uh, 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 accordingly? So, first of all, thank you, Bhuvnesh ji, for inviting me uh, with this first panel. And uh, FNB is my passion, and uh, the question is also very appropriately put uh, for me. So uh, let me let me just you know while everybody spoke about sort of numbers, nobody picked on the FNB numbers, and I'm just going to put across some FNB numbers for you. So uh, what we are looking at is at a 41.1 billion dollar industry as of 2022, which is just the food and beverage space, and we are slated to grow by almost 11.19 percent CAGR which would mean that by 2028, this industry is set to be a little shy of about $80 billion. So we are talking about almost doubling the whole industry in a space of about six to five to six years. So that would obviously mean that a lot of requirement of talent and manpower or just manpower will be there because FNB itself is very, very uh, manpower heavy space. Now, what has happened in the past uh, three to four years through COVID and all, and I'm sure, you know, uh, everybody has experienced it differently. And for me, what the experience has been that, you know, there has been a little bit change in how the customer dynamics are. And we are seeing that we are able to retain more customers eating inside the hotel than stepping out. And even companies prefer it that way. So the capture ratio, which used to sit at about 20-25% earlier on, is now almost touching, you know, near touching 40%. Now, that could be purely because of packages that we float or very, very aggressive deals. But then the point is that still we're able to retain them inside the hotel. And my hotel sits inside a, a sort of a mixed use building, which has, uh, you know, a lot of QSR options as well. But still, we're able to do that, which means that there is an opportunity which has been, you know, we've sort of got a positive spin to whatever has happened. A lot of constant events, a lot of constant activations. You see your uh, uh, social screens and then you will see every hotel kind of always being active and i think that's that's one thing which has become very earlier there were structured uh, approaches to things but now we see a lot of activity uh, activities that are happening all around <laughs> apart from that what's happened is the menus have sort of uh, become a little more smaller I, I think all of us would agree that you know we've all sort of shrunk our menus to make sure that uh, you know with this churn of team and the churn of service staff we are able to uh, you know cater to that smaller menu as a company in Accor and as part of the FNB Alchemist team across uh, Middle East, Asia, Pacific, we've taken up a constant effort in sustainability to reduce food waste. And what we've done is that we've said that which is the biggest function that happens in, across all hotels, and that is breakfast where we put out an elaborate buffet. So we made a list of total number of dishes that are there. And then we realized that we're an, at an average hotel putting more than 200 plus dishes uh, out there, which includes all you know, the chutneys and the sauces and everything put together. And then we made a conscious decision to reduce it to 146 dishes. Uh, dishes. And that flexibility is with us now to make those 146 six dishes stick. And this is already piloted in Dubai. And the hotels have seen really, really positive results on how we can reduce food waste and, you know, shrink our uh, buffet and not have you know, as much to cook in the morning. Because again, we are looking at people making that dish. A uh, lot of flexibility in hours. Again, again, from a digital standpoint, a lot of things have happened where, you know, you know scan codes, digital uh, footprint have been improved. Uh, you, don't, you don't need direct interaction for order taking. So the skill required to take an order, which was earlier very, very high, has been sort of made a little bit, uh, you know, you offset or mitigate that issue by putting in digital scan codes where the menu itself is, quite visual in nature and you can actually put up videos and all how things are being prepared. So those things have ha helped FNB, uh, not just in hotels, but in standalones uh, or across the board, if you see. Uh, we've seen that, you know, fine dining is starting to come back into play. And, you know, this is uh, during my recent visits across uh, various cities. Uh, you see that, you know, some of the great fine dining places are starting to edge in again and you probably this culture will again set back in. But while fine dining is setting in, we are seeing menu fluidity, which would mean that uh, your not mono cuisine restaurants, your specialty restaurants are not 
mono cuisine and they are sort of piggy banging on two or three cuisines to you know support that because one you need specialists to create a mono cuisine plus you need a lot of stickiness from a customer standpoint to drive that uh, business uh, little activations in you know driving local food and millet has been the you know uh, food of the year and it has been and i have recently uh, understood from some people in uh, the hotel who uh, are getting treated by just consuming millet for themselves so i mean millets has taken a big space in the local food uh, business and not just millets but people are going for gi tagged food uh, you know uh, making sure that they are buying within a you know 50 60 mile radius so that it's more uh, uh, a lesser lesser carbon footprint on that revenue management is set to take up a bigger space uh, uh, across india all uh, accor hotels have recently started this whole restaurant revenue management practice so that again our our uh, reliance on uh, human intervention is set, sort of reducing and we are more relying on technology to get our uh, information and we can make our changes in business how we move forward uh uh you know trainings are becoming more crisp we are not now training people for uh, across paradigm of food and beverage like sandeep just mentioned that you know we are not looking at ihms for filling our manpower gaps there is a lot of casual labor that is involved in filling our manpower gap and what we do is we do a very very crisp small training sometimes it is just like a uh, a very very specific function so if a guy is working in banqueting we just assign a certain task and that is what we impart that training and that will take him from a certain place to a certain place probably that is what is helping us move forward and probably this will and if we can cross functionalize this over time we will probably get a little more learned uh, manpower um ecor has begun a program for women into fnb that is one area where we see very very few women across the board and there is a women mentorship program and i am one of the mentors in one of one of the women mentorship programs in pune i hope and wish we can more, drive more women into this so though we have 25% women in the hotel 25 to 30% in that is business. low that is low yeah but in a, in a hotel which is 25 30% women in fnb is barely 4 to 5% so that's that's something which we have to look at if you really want to achieve in the hotel a higher percentage of women which are about 40 to 50% actually accor has a goal of 50% women uh, in leadership roles but if you want to really drive it you'll have to look at it in food and beverage space particularly so that's one area where we started a mentorship program and uh, we have made you know those norms of hotels more flexible and the tagline goes is come as you are so bhuvnesh that would mean that you know Uh, we are not saying you want to you know not keep a ponytail or you want to have braided hair or something like that please you know that that you should have and come colored hair is also acceptable in each i mean earlier there was a time that no tattoo would be allowed but now you know you're allowing these things to happen. life has changed has life has changed you know so those those flexibilities are there yesterday uh, you know we were having this conversation at one of the colleges that i was uh, giving a lecture on on to the new joinees and you know the lot of conversation is around event management and when i ask them what is event management what is event management, their whole concept is that every day is exciting and then when i explain to them how my life is exciting every day how i get to meet from sharukh khan to amir khan on a different day they thought about hotels change and this is what my effort is you know go to colleges and try and explain exactly. to them exactly so we, <laughs> we've got to tell them the good stories yeah good and stories. the story is actually very good yeah. so let me now let me now i'll have to now uh, you know take a short commercial break we're uh, a little off time so we've got to keep it shorter now and uh, yeah so let's bring in the video salman thank you uh, sachin that is a good response and bringing fnb into the picture grateful uh sandeep if i can come back we are at halfway stage and we'll now have to 
slightly manage the time better. Uh, tell me if hospitality bounce back is so strong as we know and as we see. Uh, so is it with the airlines and the others? But on the flip side, unaffordable AFAs can be that derailer which can throw some bit of our plans in doubt. You're on mute. You're on mute. Is it, I, I'm getting a similar sort of question. Uh, I mean, the way that I answered the first one uh, is sort of sort of similar. Uh, again, something that holds true for a leisure destination doesn't hold true for, for a business destination. Um, again, the way the airlines function is, is, is on the signs of demand and supply. Um, and what we are seeing, uh, say, for example, in Bangalore, we have another terminus which is opened up, which is going to open up a lot more, more, uh, because we make, make, make travel convenience, that, that's for one. Also, I mean, uh, airlines always traditionally has been the oxygen to the body of the hotels industry. Uh, more flights into the city, for international travelers coming to the city, anything which is related to the upbeat movement of the airlines has always had positive impact on the hotel industry. Uh, you speak about the flip side of the of the fares. I mean, right fare or wrong fare is, is something which is very relative. Um, from the international standards, they they still still okay and acceptable fares that they run on. But uh, but you but you have to also look at how the sector has been evolving. How how many sectors have opened? How many new opens? Uh, airports in the countries have opened. More connectivity will get in more people. I mean, also look at the number of aircrafts people have been ordering, you know, so it is, it is going to be, I mean, we talk, I mean, when Air India ordered 470 aircraft, we said, oh my goodness, 470, and then Indigo came up with uh, 1330 number of aircrafts, uh, huge numbers, I mean, all these aircrafts are going to come in and they're going to fly within the country and outside. Yeah, but, the, but the window is long for delivery of those aircraft, right? And they'll be replacing existing fleet. Yes, that's a very good indicator. But there's a game there. So, you know, in the sense, you order those bulk aircraft, but then that'll be over 10 years, 15 years. Still, I mean, when was this last then? Movie? So, uh, great, great positives in terms of, I mean, I mean, oh, absolutely. I, I absolutely. am looking at, I am looking at the scenario completely in a positive manner, saying that, I mean, the development of aircraft, aircraft, airports is a positive sign. Uh, I mean, I, if you want, if you have time, then I, co I correlate this with the with the manpower situation that it's going to. Uh, please, uh, please. Yeah, because I mean, all this is also going to take up a manpower, and again, uh, except for one one air uh, training institute, I do not hear of too many too many training institute that these guys have. I mean, hotel industry has still has IHMs and so many colleges, but what what infrastructure do they have, or do the do the airline industry have to back? the manpower, huge humongous manpower requirement that they have. Again, they, they, they have the short term thing of, of poaching from the from the hotel industry. The entire FNB sector, if you see, I, I bump into a known face every airport where I, I go and dine in the lawn. So, so that's the status of them, uh, which of course is a challenge. But I, I think, I mean, again, and, and not that, just airline companies, facilities management companies, right? Exactly. Exactly, but I am I am looking at a reverse reverse brain drain. You know, I mean, I I look at all these other. That's what. Uh, and I mean, we should also look at people being trained at the airport and and coming into the hotel industry. Why not? You know, so we have to look at that. We have to open our eyes far wider to look at the source market when it comes to people. And uh, why not airports and airlines? Absolutely, yeah, Sandeep, very relevant input. Uh, uh, reverse. Uh, you know, the reverse flow of people who've left are coming back and they should bring in others also. Right? Yeah. So, all right, good, good, good. That's that's a good case for an industry. Manish, if I may come back to you. All right. So mice, mice is extremely important. And of course, for your rather well-appointed hotel, we see it behind you, right? For those of you who've not been there, he's got the Hilton and bang next, he's also got the... Uh, 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 the Hilton uh, Garden Inn. Hilton Garden Inn, and both extremely well appointed and very well located, right on the outer ring road of Ebal. Uh, you've got to see the Maneta Tech Park, brilliant place. Uh, so Miley's bounce back was the last, you know, 
the domestic travelers started coming in. I think the international travelers been the last, but it has come back strong. How do you see? It? How do you see it play? And what more? And what next? And what are your plans for this revenue stream? And what innovations? And how are they faring? And their effect on people? Okay. Um, so, um, mice was a very important segment for us a year back, and this still continues to be. How do I see it uh, progressing in the future? With the growth of the Indian economy, with more manufacturing moving to India, with more airports, the international association congresses that would probably happen in Europe or US or Southeast Asia would probably want to move to India. Um, because the biggest market for them is sitting in India, or the biggest dealers are sitting in India. So I, I see this growing further and further from here on. Um, my as a segment brings beyond hotels, it brings in so much more to the economy in terms of spent by the delegates in the city for the city in terms of shopping or in terms of local transportation. And it can be a key driving force for the growth of the city. So to answer your question, Bobby, I, I see this segment growing uh, exponentially in the coming years. Uh, while we will be competing with the rest of the world, uh, particularly uh, Southeast Asia, uh, but with the growth of infrastructure in India and airports and easy visa regulations, I see us having a very good chance to take this segment to another level. Uh, couple of things that we have done uh, for uh, in terms of innovation when we opened this complex was we we are twin um, branded complex so we have a we have a micro site of what we call it or a combined website and that we designed particularly for the mice delegate so that he or she can understand the entire complex and then make a decision for a mice uh, decision maker it's very important to see what he or she is getting into from wherever they're sitting uh, to understand uh, the complex better. So microsite uh, is, is a key thing. And one thing that I'm finding with a lot of uh, mice RFPs that are coming to us is, is their focus on sustainability. So what is every hotel doing from a sustainability piece to neutral the carbon footprint of the delegates who have traveled? Uh, is, is becoming a key point. So as we hoteliers move forward, we need to think more creatively. We, we need to find better ways to advise the delegates what they can do uh, and to reduce the carbon footprint. Uh, the, these, will be the, uh, these will be the game changers for the future. Excellent, yeah. Uh, mice is a big one and, and pretty good. And it's a short business now once it starts happening. Yeah, and, 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 the, and it drives the economy. So. And drives oh, it just dr drives the economy. Oh, it drives it's not just the hotel. It's all about commerce, not just commerce yeah. for yourself. It's commerce with what they do. So it's all touch wood, very positive, and we need it if we have to hit go past eight percent, right? So yeah. So Varun, talking about eight percent, we've spoken about mice. We've spoken about FNB. We've done it all. Wait, what about the big, big fat Indian wedding? You know? So weddings, thank God for the big fat Indian weddings. Uh, uh, and hotels must, you know, thank them with both hands folded uh, uh, and the parenting values. I mean, if you want to do anything, destination wedding, if you want to do a wedding, right? And a good wedding. We had to do simple weddings, but we don't have to do so, you know, you, you host a lot of uh, weddings. How has it gone from no weddings and none to small and a few to now the big, large uh, tamashas uh, with parties, nach gana, pina, pilana, khana, shana. Uh, but could destination weddings be that dampener, that delay? You know, on the contrary, I, I think 
destination weddings open a lot of horizons for a lot of us and specifically from a hotelier's point of view um a good wedding month for uh, any hotel for any leisure mice hotel can be equivalent to 3 months top line revenues for a city hotel and from that perspective i think um, you know from a revenue top line it also opens doors for new development sites um, which really brings in a lot of um, progression from a, a hotel standpoint of view from um, a job perspective from a career orientation in fact uh, there are development and uh, you know feasibility teams of various hotel companies which have been given an agenda to find such destinations where in new mice leisure hotels can come in and i think that is very important because it's a big huge um, revenue model uh, just to throw in one little number that i came across was 3.7 lakh crores and i was awestruck with it because that's how big the wedding industry in india is and 3.75 lakh crores if you start putting the number of zeros if even a 1% of that comes to a hotel i don't think anyone uh, or um, the big fat indian wedding would be a dampener for any of the general managers present here uh, for specifically mice hotels that manish or sandeep or even uh, to that extent uh, sachin um, are really holding on i think this is a big segment saya dates are determining how well the yielding opportunity for a city may be so uh, revenue managers are not sitting only on city wide event dates they are monitoring saya dates as closely as probably a religious person who is writing these and they are much more aware now uh, from uh, a saya date perspective or for the various religion uh, religious calendars and that is the kind of importance that we are giving now, not all of them are going by saya these days right yeah not not all of them but they are definitely a key precursors of the occupancy forecasting that a city may be seen for example any big event uh, that is being held at manish's hotel or further down at a big leisure mice hotel would definitely have a kind of an effect uh, of the city cbd area occupancy is also getting inflated and i think that gives us an opportunity to yield better so in a nutshell from a people perspective how we were equipped to handle the big fat weddings 10 15 20 years uh, back is no longer the case because there are a lot of specialized vendors who have come and partnered up with hotels as great aggregators um, for example one vendor comes with 250 recipes of desserts so your dessert is taken care of similarly there are a lot of aggregating um, you know we come back this happens koi nahi even hercules dropped it aa jayega bhai so another few seconds and then we'll move to you virender go i think how we are going to be taking care of that um of, or how well the manning cycles can be i think it's given us a great exposure and it will only um, you know be relevant to say that the wedding seasons in india will always become bigger and better because it is also becoming more structured and organized and the more it becomes structured and organized the better would be the yielding results so for a hotelier it will never die and it will never be a dampener because weddings will definitely drive our top line uh, scenarios in a very positive way and direct and indirect employment yes right so there's so many people who depend on them right great thanks varun that is good Thank input virender now let me come to you you're the one who's got a rather well appointed spa gym facilities you, right from a state of full stop and no go to now busy 
where people have to seek appointments and get in there, right? Uh, how have you planned for this segment? How is it growing? This is the one segment, in my view, which has neither seasonality, nor age, nor gender barriers. They all want it. And how are you able to keep up with the demand? One, two, uh, getting talent to run a spa, manage a spa is not very easy. You know, they come from all over the country, but they're specialists. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, um, are we able to keep up with the demand in a business hotel? Yes. Because uh, for the last few years, not few years, other two decades, uh, the spa culture uh, got incorporated in this country early 2000 when a uh, few chains focused on spas only. And most of the hotels, I remember when I was at uh, ITC Calcutta at Sonar, we used to always promote that hotel as a businessman's resort. Has this uh, sentence got significance now 20 years down the line? Yes especially for our long-stay guests who are staying with us. So for weekends, they definitely like to have a good spa in a hotel. And we have been able to match that, uh, I would say, that demand. That is one. Second, you have to also see like how f &B, your restaurants position you in the domestic market. So has now spas. Because a lot of fewer known guests who are well wishers of the hotel and have been patronizing your brand, they want to utilize your these facilities during weekends. And what we have also seen that spa and wellness center at this point of time may be on overall revenue of the hotel, it may be just an olive uh, on top of the salad, but it adds a lot of value to the hotel facilities. And surprisingly, it is at this point of time also contributing, I won't say a handsome economic uh, remuneration to the hotel, but yes, it is a profit making uh, facility because these days the visitors, tourists and professionals who stay in the hotel are becoming more and more demanding and the way the modern public within the hotel industry they are looking for that comfort and wellness, not only from the physical wellness point of view, but also mental uh, you know, point. And it also is a decisive factor when a lot of your guests are choosing your hotel for weekends and public holidays. I do round about, I would say, 12 to 15% of my occupancy during weekends and public holidays are staycations. So that is only because of our these uh, good facilities. Should all hotels go for it? If you ask me, yes, because wellness is a growing market. So better be part of it. At this point of time, I don't think in this country, we have utilized the full potential of, of this segment. And in a hotel, the real estate is a little bit on the subsidized price. And people can take out, uh, I mean, say the hotels can take out three to four. But also, the good news is traffic. not just residents, uh, walk-ins, you know. So for for facilities like spa, gym, and all, it's right. not residents, you know, guests. It's also the people uh, from the catchment who exactly, exactly, because you also have the membership for spa and gym. And in addition to that, you know, every hotel has this loyalty program. Every company has this loyalty program. And a lot of guests are given access against the payment uh, in the hotel who are uh, members of those loyalty programs. So oh, excellent. So this is, this is, so this is a, an extremely important revenue stream. But tell me more about the talent. How do you get people? No, I, I was know, coming to that well, also because yeah. a good wellness center, so many times as we are talking about mice, sometimes there we get some boutique small conferences who are also uh, want to be part of the spa. They want to have those kind of sessions in the hotel, which will really create a mental well-being of their uh, I would say managers, staff or uh, top-notch guests who are staying with us. And now coming on the talent, I must say we are very 
uh, lucky in this country that we have this northeast belt in our country and a lot of our manpower a lot of our talent for the spa gets sourced from that area because they are very good in this uh, in, in this space of hospitality because they bring in a lot of eastern hospitality with western efficiency uh, to the board so that way lot of our international guests when they use our spas for them feeling is very international because they have been exposed more on the in the southeast asia like uh, thailand uh, and all these uh, malaysia oh, alag like oh, like spa yeah thailand wala thoda zyada no 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 i'm not i'm 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 talking about from the wellness point <laughs> wellness so, yes yeah. <laughs> so zyada well ho jata the 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 talent at this point of time yes it is a challenge to retain that talent and like how we are taking different majors to retain our other uh, hotel colleagues the same kind of application is done for this but yes talent is available it's just that how do we nurture and train them so that they can offer best to our guests who are staying with us and it's a great uh, i would say a great vertical to focus on and every hotel which has a space and can uh, dedicate uh, anything towards the wellness in a scientific manner with a adds lot of value and gives you a good profitability of uh, 50 55% oh excellent excellent oh thanks uh, virender that's uh, extremely useful uh, i've i've been i've stayed at the Leela Bhartiya City, so very well appointed hotel, extremely good facilities. Yeah. Thank All right. Uh, I shall now move in with the last question, last but not the least. Like I always say, Sachin, I'm coming back to you. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. So tell me about hotels away from downtown. Uh, is the action evenly spread, or is it across, say, in one large or say massive and busy city like Bangalore? Bangalore is actually a few cities like Delhi and Mumbai are put together, you know. Uh, so south is one, north is one, east is one, west is one. So, बहुत ही ज़्यादा करो. Bangalore में travelling can can be a pain. Uh, let the spoil be for all. Your views and how have you planned to go about it? So. Um... just to cue on what earlier was said about hiring of people uh, i recently hired almost 7 8 people in the system non uh, hotel or okay. hired from airport so oh really yeah so i've taken three marar se liye kahan se liye aapne maine bial se hire kiya this oh no hari bahut gaaliyan de rahe honge aapko oh humne bhi bahut diye acha acha ha boliye so 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 there is a reverse hiring happening and because i think everybody hits a threshold at some point and then you will see oh. we come back into the fold so so that's that's a positive sign uh, now talking about traffic uh, traffic is the reason why bangalore is divided into micro micro market not because of east west north and south uh, and uh, certain bottleneck streets are the one which create a separate market, micro market so for example beyond my hotel towards going towards outer of outer road becomes one micro market just because there is a kr puram bottle like which is sitting and that you know i can count up to 7 8 micro markets probably anybody sandeep could count up to 10 so bangalore has innumerable micro markets depending on where you are located now let me give you a perspective on why traffic makes it into micro market uh, on a global index uh, we are ranked uh, we means bangalore is ranked at number 2 just after london on a traffic index which means that on an average a person is spending 266 hours on the road in the traffic which would also mean that you're driving not more than 18 kilometers per hour so any fancy car will actually meaningless unless you're driving on sundays so that brings me to a perspective of how uh, things will decongest over time i think the uh, metro network which is being laid about 2026 we are looking at about 175 kilometers of metro rail which is on the come into play i mean partially uh, over, over the period of time so um, room business very very limited uh, movement you will see across spaces uh, people don't want to navigate through the city traffic 
So the business is limited within that five to seven kilometer radius where your hotel is located. So your catchment is that that much. But from an FNB point of view, I would like to just say that uh, people don't want to travel uh, out to a longer uh, or a far distance restaurant. They will only travel for three reasons. And that as per me, one is it should be a legacy restaurant. Either you're traveling to an MTR, CTR or some legacy with the Bhavan restaurant to enjoy some favorite idli of yours. Or, or if the restaurant is new, so you want to experience the novelty of that restaurant or the meal is free. Only then you will travel to those places. Otherwise, you will probably be in that zone of eating. <laughs> so, <laughs> like how, how we design f and is we try and keep the f and very, very simple. So, while we have certain unique elements into f and the menu by and large remains very, very commercial. There's a lot of emphasis on comfort food that we provide so that people who are there staying with us over a long period of time or traveling, traveling regularly can get their comfort food. And Bangalore is a very cosmopolitan city in nature from a global standpoint as well. So your menus has to have a certain spread of uh, dishes that is required. So your menu cannot isolate in a very, very uh, minor approach. So, uh, and how do you mitigate your weekends? Because weekend is generally a little slow on occupancy for hotels which are located on the periphery or more towards our uh, IT park areas uh, is by doing activities and events. And, you know, uh, like we recently, I hosted the Bangalore Poetry Festival, which drove in a lot of people into the hotel. So that's your mitigating policy and every hotel is doing something on those lines to ensure that your weekends are getting covered better. Um, on a talent side, I just would like to say that, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to sound really biased. There are two set of people that get hired. One is local who live and belong here. And the other set is coming from uh, other parts of the country, uh, primarily Northeast and East. And uh, for people coming from outside the city, we are providing accommodation for 15 days and extendable. And then we help them provide, get a house in a PG or whatever category they would like to go for. That's an advertisement and it's chargeable. Yes. And then for hiring, what we do for locals is that we try and hire people from a uh, very, very small radius. So we try and see that you're, you know, you're not coming across the city so that, because we've seen in the past that we've hired some people from a little far off and there has been a very high yeah. amount of attrition of the guys fatigued yeah. out very soon. So, so that's what we've done as a strategy and we've, we've seen some results, but not to our expectation, but hopefully that would, should lead us to a better retention levels. So that's that's from my end on this piece. So very useful, uh, uh, and also with this. So my takeaway from your this thing is FNB is at the center of your heart, right? Gom Pirke, you come to FNB. But yes. having said that, this show has been extremely interesting. You see, Bangalore is not a very it's a very interesting market. It gives you a lot of opportunities, right? Huge opportunities, right? But uh, it has its challenges. Uh, and talent, like you just mentioned, uh, is one of them. If you hire from too far, your attrition levels are going to be higher. So you've got to keep them around your hotel within three to four kilometers. And three to four kilometers is actually more than half an hour of travel, depending upon where you are. Yes. So, so the talent is difficult. Bangalore gives you a lot of opportunities. If you are an outsider from the north, northeast, east, wherever you are from, uh, I mean, I I come very frequently to to Bangalore, and you see the contribution of people who are coming from across the country. Having said that, hospitality is a great magnet for people, and to pick experience, it doesn't get bad, better than uh, Bangalore. You know, the weather is conducive, the industry is hot and happening. And uh, yes, a lot of opportunities. But thank you, gentlemen. Uh, it's been a great show. Uh, I've had, of course, I've uh, Sandeep has been with me on a show before. But my first time with Virender, Varun, uh, Sachin and Manish, not the last time. This is just a beginning. We're coming back with more. Uh, our next show, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the east. Right? We've had two rounds in the north two in the west, two in the south. Now we're going to the east with two shows. Then we'll move off to the northeast, central, do northwest, southeast again. We had planned to do 20 shows, but looks like we'll be doing a lot more. 
so watch out for us uh, support us watch the shows watch the recordings and support all these general managers look these guys are all bright stars you know see where they started from where they are if you want to be like them you want to sit where they are in a few years from now hospitality is the industry you should be in these are bright guys see how articulate they are how well do they present their case imagine you know like i always keep saying a hotel can have between 100 to 1000 employees where would you get the opportunity for running such large empires right you have so many streams within them progress and and if you have any queries you have any career doubts reach out to these gurus manish gar uh, virender varun satish and sandeep thank you gentlemen thank you for gracing our show thank you team bw ajit saurav nilesh amit tanvi my colleague uh, salman prashant uh, kartike last but not the least shweta thank you all for making the gm series hot and happening and yes last but not the least a gentleman block 20th and 21st of may for the bw hotelier indian hospitality summit and awards it will be held at a course pullman at the aero city in new delhi uh, the nominations are opening within the next few days watch out nominate yourself and thank you again thank you again gentlemen thank you Salman, so much thank you thank you thank you all right that's the bw teller indian hospitality summit and awards nomination slides on to diversity thank you bye 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 manish bye virender varun sachin thank you and sandeep god bless you